Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today, a wonderful show for you today. <clears throat> I'm no longer in D.C. I'm back in town. For all of you who've been following me over the last few days of my dire straits, the last few days where things were very difficult for me, this has been the worst January in my lifetime. This has been the worst January in the history of my life. I had never seen the tribulations that I've seen this year thus far in my life. And I tell you something, the important thing about living, the important thing about life, the important thing about being is knowing that you can get right back up and move forward is knowing that, you know what? If you are good to people, people are good to you. If you are out there doing the right things, when you are down, when you have the problems, of, when you are really in dire straits, people are there for you. And I want to thank all my folk. I want to thank all the people from Politics Done Right, family, friends, everybody. Because it was tough. And what I'm going to do right now to start the program, every, it's, all, it's all about my daughter over the last seven, eight, over the last eight days, over the last week. And of course, you guys have told you the story of my mother-in-law passing away a few weeks ago and the tribulations that she went through with the healthcare system. And of course, now with the issue with my daughter that I'm going to play an interview that I did with my daughter in D.C. because she is a trooper. I am so proud of her. And I want to play this and then we'll get, get on. I tell you what, let me go ahead and start the program and then I'll play that and then we'll move on uh, from there. Anyhow, title of the show today is, Here's My Healthcare Ordeal. Will You Tell Me Yours? We need Medicare for all. There is no doubt about that. My daughter, Ashley Willie, has got a stroke at 28 years old. 28 years old. Something I've never expected. Never expected. This was a scare of my life. It has made me that much more passionate about advocating uh, for Medicare for all. We got to get Medicare for All. Forcing politicians to support Medicare for All first requires massive education by examples. We have to be there showing people, telling people our stories, letting people know what's been happening in our lives. That is how we are going to get the Medi Medicare for All story out. That is how we are going to get things done. You know why? Because the plutocracy has invested. They have a vested interest in lying to you. They have a vested interest in, in making you fear that what which you need. And we are here, independent media, to tell you, you don't have to follow. You don't have to believe. You don't have to believe those who really do not have your best interest at hand. And that's what we are here for. So folks, stay with me. Hang with me. We are going to get this taken care of. We are going to get Medicare for all. You know, I find it kind of amusing because, uh, it, well, it turns out that well, let, let's let's finish here. Uh, forcing politicians to support Medicare for All first requires massive education by examples. I intend to tell my personal stories, because I have many, in every venue I can find. More importantly, the stories will be told in a manner that others can see themselves within them. Uh, that is how we educate as well as allow others to infer what could happen to them based on what has happened to others. You see, most of the times people say or people think, well, that's not going to happen to me. Or they think that, you know, uh, they, they, they cannot internalize that which is happening to you to others. So what I am trying to do, I'll tell my story. I want you to tell your story. Please call 646-716-5812. Tell me your medical situation that needs to be told, something that others need to see. That can happen to me as well. This evil system. 
with beautiful buildings and beautiful offices and beautiful and beautiful furniture and nice literature and the, the beauty of our healthcare system that most of us are paying for but cannot afford to use. So folks, please call 646-716-5812 if you have a story to tell. I want story after story. And those of you who have stories, there are times I may send you an email and say, let's get you on video. Let's get you as a part of the show so that the other people within you, they can look at you and see themselves and see things that could be happening to them. That's so important because so many people think they're out there alone. So many people think that, you know what? Nobody else is going through what I'm going through. And what we are here to tell you folks is that is not the case. There are many a people, there are many people going through what you are going through and we want to be there. We want to be there for you as well. So don't despair. The program today, I want you to call 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. You have a story to tell. We have ears. You have a story to tell. We'll make sure that it gets told. You have a story to tell. We will make sure that you are heard. So um, I have a lot to go through. I see I already have a call here. So what I'm going to go and do is I'll go ahead and take the call and then we'll move on from there because this is your show. And if I have calls, I'll take the calls first and then we'll go into what happened to my daughter. We'll go into other issues thereafter. So caller from 717, you are hot. Come on in. Hi, Egberto. This is Lon um, calling from Pennsylvania. Yes, talk um, to me, sir. Really enjoy your show, show and appreciate what you do. Um, I'm calling because uh, at age 40, um, I found out that I have a, um, a condition called hydrocephalus, which means that I have uh, too much fluid around my brain. Uh -huh. um, it can come from uh, a lot of soldiers end up with it uh, from concussions. Uh, can come from, you know, sports accidents, what have you. Uh, I was apparently born with it, um, but somehow survived. Usually you get uh, surgery at, as a baby. Um, I survived until age 36 and found out that I had it. It took me another four years to find a surgeon who would end up operate with it, on uh, from concussions. Um, and from all of our sur my surgeries and treatments, um, we almost went bankrupt. Um, Can you tell I me lost, approximately how much did, uh, did all of that cost you, sir? Um, it was, uh, I know, well over um, $160,000. Wow. Um, yeah, and that was just the first year of in 2004. I ended up needing three brain surgeries. Um, and so... Uh, it, it well, turned that out that you, I, sir? Um, I lost my my job and I needed to uh, go on um, disability. Um, had it not been for being able to go on disability and get um, uh, Medicare dis disability benefits, um, we would have gone bankrupt because there's no way that we would have been able to afford the 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 ongoing. Um, payments uh, that, that would have been required um, for the future because I've had uh, another four surgeries since then. And uh, it, it's just incredible. I mean, my wife is a physical therapist and, and she knows the medical system and, you know, how to for advocate the, for me, the ongoing, um, you know, with the insurance companies and all of that. But had I not had her I, I don't know how anybody can go through our medical system because the the insurance companies, their job is to make sure that they pay as little as possible. And with a system like that, you can't get the care you need and, and be able to afford to pay for it. it it's, it's just impossible. I don't know how any average person does it. Um, I'm, I'm just grateful that I had my wife to you know, guide me through it. You know, um, uh, what, what was your name again, sir? 
Lawn. 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 Let me tell you. The thing about it is uh, there is such media out there that is attempting to misinform people, to scare people, and all of that. And, and one of the, one of the yes. promises that I've made thus far is I will not succumb to that. And one of the reasons, effective yes. today, I am going to be taking all these stories and putting these stories in places where they can have maximal impact. Because in your story, there are many other people who can see that, uh, who can live vicariously through what you are going through. And that is our intent right Thank now, you. for people to stop listening to the corporate media, people to stop listening to those who are there lying to you and go and using yes. your own ideology against your own health. So I want to thank you, first of all, for coming on Politics Done thank Right you. and telling us your story, sir. Thank you, Egberto, and you keep doing what you're doing. Uh, we, we love you and uh, give you all our encouragement. Thank you, sir. You have a wonderful day, okay? You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, folks, give us a call, 646-716-5812. That was a long story. Uh, you have a story. There are, there are thousands of people, millions of people out there with stories. Now, uh, while I, I wait along for others to uh, call in or come by, what I want to do is I want to tell you the story. First of all, I, I've already told you guys the story that has happened with my mother-in-law, her death, how uh, the private insurance sector uh, monopolized and, and ripped the system off. Not her specifically immediately, but the system off, and eventually it will likely be her as well, even through death. Now, my daughter just got a stroke, and what I want to do is I want to play uh, she's doing a lot better, and she. I, I went to Washington, D.C. this entire week to be there with her, to take care of her. My wife is out there now with her to spend this week with her. She's on her way to recovery, and we, we, are, we are hoping she has problems. She has blind spots in her eyes, a whole half of her eyes blind, but she can see, and we're hoping that she makes a full recovery. But what I want to do is I want to play that for you, and then I'll come back, take more calls, and also tell you more about the story what we intend to do. So uh, check this out and uh, we'll take it on the other side. We are currently at my daughter's apartment in Washington, D.C. This is not a standard Politics Done Right show. This beautiful young lady is my daughter. Hi. And I, I had to fly up out here because on Saturday, I get a call from my daughter that said, Dad, I'm in the ER. I am bleeding in my brain. You know how that feels for a father. After hearing that news, I was, I was on a plane a few hours afterwards to see my daughter. Her boyfriend, thankfully, was there giving her assistance and care, uh, keeping her her till daddy got there it's a miracle Ashley why don't you tell the audience what you had and then I want to put the politics into what we're talking about excuse me if I look over a little bit wonky I have what we call a visual deficit uh, I have a visual deficit or if you want to know the real name a homonymous hemianopsia which means in each eye I have one half of my visual field so this means that if you were to look at a sheet of paper and see a picture. What I have here, I'm gonna draw it right now. These two are my eyes, right? The part that is scribbled, that scribbled part is what I do not see. That means that when I look at people, I literally see half their face. Why do I have this? Well, I was lucky enough to find out early that I have something called an AVM or an arterial venous malformation. What this means is that my arteries and veins formed a cluster around a structure in my brain and in your brain too called a thalamus. Thalamus is like the powerhouse, one of the powerhouse things of the brain, right? It controls and modulates is the better word. It modulates. She's a third year medical student so we are going to try to understand what she's saying. She's going okay. to be simple though. She knows how to explain. Yeah. So the thing is this. My thalamus, your thalamus, everybody thalamus, it controls kind of it kind of keeps in check what your brain is trying to tell your body and what the body's trying to tell the brain it's like a mind-body connection so I call like the thalamus kind of like a mini mission control like Houston okay so let's call the thalamus Houston so I have this huge cluster of arteries and veins that are communicating with each other around my Houston in my brain a lot of times you don't want arteries and veins communicating that much with each other because arteries have a lot of oxygen and veins do not veins take 
the deoxygenated blood or blood that doesn't have a lot of oxygen to the heart and arteries take it away from the heart so supply the rest of the body. And it does that all throughout the body. And in my brain, I have literally a cluster. I wish I could show you the picture, but it's a cluster. It looks like a knob, like a bag of worms around my thalamus that are twisted and tied. Well, because they're twisted and tied, it makes some of that tissue that's that the vessels are made out of kind of weak. And because I also have another thing called hypertension that is wonderfully inherited from this guy um, <laughs> and my mom, it made me more likely for an event to happen. And the event being a burst of vessel, which we called a hemorrhagic stroke. So when you hear stroke, you're like, oh, they have a stroke. There's two kinds of strokes. Embolitic, which means there's something plugged, which means there's a part of your brain that doesn't get oxygen. Then you have my stroke, hemorrhagic, where something bursts and blood goes out. Luckily, the blood that I have was not that much. It was like a little bloop and it caused irritation in the fibers called the optic radiations in my head that irritated my eye nerves <laughs> and it stopped me from seeing half of people's faces. Now this is supposed to go away with time and with therapy and with work and with positivity, which actually is a real thing. Positivity is medically proven to help. Just putting that out there. So yeah, and I'm super, 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 super lucky. Like how my aunt says, who's another doctor. My aunt told me, my Tia, so that imagine if I was like in an airplane, right? We're simply a change in pressure. Let's say I had high blood pressure on an airplane with a change in pressure. That could have been a rupture. And then today I recently heard that one of my friends friend also has an AVM, as you is what I have. And she also had a stroke at my age, right? I'm 28. So it's, it's not very common, but it happens. And she lost function of her motor. That means she can't walk anymore. So I am extremely lucky that my only deficit is my vision. I'm cognitively intact, which means I can think, I can do math. I know this is my dad. I know what day of the week it is. I know who the president is, unfortunately. Like I have, those things intact. I can move my limbs, you know, those things are super, super important. And I'm very, very grateful that happened, but it was very, very scary because it did come on suddenly. So what I would end with is don't take any little change in your health frivolously. So don't think like, oh, it's a little hypertension. A little hyper hypertension is the silent killer of literally everyone. And so watch your diet, watch your health, exercise, do what you need to do. Because even if I had done that and my blood pressure was good, it could have happened later on down the line. They told me that this problem is usually in people who are in their 60s. However, I'm black and that matters. <laughs> black people tend to pre get, uh, predisposed hyper to. they're predisposed to early hypertensive emergencies and early hypertensive manifestations, meaning that it shows up earlier than everybody else. But look, uh, so <laughs> one of, I said I wanted to take this political, not necessarily with, with her because like she's a medical school student, they have to be politically neutral, all that good stuff, but sure well, not really poli politically neutral, but they have to be sensitive with the way they say certain things. But I tell you something, uh, we, are, we are blessed in that my daughter is at Howard University in DC mm -hmm. and they had health care. All the med students get health care. And had she gone into that emergency room and if it weren't the emergency room of the university that she went to, there's a good possibility that had she presented anywhere else, she would have had massive problems first taken seriously based on how she had looked then. But it is so important when we sit down and talk about Medicare for all, when we sit down and talk about my daughter, yes, it's great that she got that. But it is essential that that she came out of this in this state. I can say, oh my God, great, this is my daughter. And it turned out fine so far. And we are going to make sure to work with her so that she keeps her blood pressure down so that she keeps her stress level down mm -hmm. and so that she's not as sometimes forceful like her daddy is. But my point here is this. Every American citizen, every single one should have the outcome my daughter had. Every single American is do that. And for those Trump supporters and all those that are standing against Medicare for all, all of you, if you know how I felt on that airplane waiting 10 hours before I could see my daughter's face. 10 hours. Because think about knowing that instead of 10 hours going to somebody getting care, 10 hours going to somebody who's going to die. So folks, the reason I my daughter to do this with me is because I am starting to tell real stories. Last month, we lost our mother-in-law, her grandmother, to a stroke. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother had a stroke during dinner on Christmas at her home. Mm -hmm. When she had her stroke,
Then Ashley, third year medical <laughs> student that she is, diagnosed her grandmother checking pupil dilations and much more to say, yes, dad, she had a stroke. She went into the hospital with Medicare, the old style Medicare, and we watched the private hospital system pill for her. We watched the private healthcare system under Medicare take advantage of a woman that was dying. And three weeks later, we have my daughter presented with, look, we need a better solution in healthcare in this country, Medicare for all. This is not something that we can just talk about and decide about and wait five years for and decide that just maybe because we don't want this democratic socialist or this socialist woman or, or whatever you want to call them to be a part of, to run a country, that you are gonna put the lives of your friends, your families, your daughters, your daddies, your granddaughters, your sons, your cousins, and everybody at risk. It just isn't right. I am so thankful to have my daughter here with me. But folks, I want you to share this. This is so very important. I want to thank my Politics Done Right family. All of you that are subscribers, all of you that are donors, all of you that make this happen, I want to thank you so kindly. Remember this, we have to start thinking about each other. We have to start thinking about all our health care, our well-being, and much more. We have to be our brother's keeper. I am your brother. Ashley is your sister. We are family. And once we start to act like that as a people, we can move forward as a country. Okay, folks, I hope you, uh, you enjoyed that. That is a story. That is what I, that is what I dealt with last week. Uh, last Saturday, again, it was when my daughter called me and I immediately went up there to Washington, D.C. to take care of her. I can tell you it was the scariest time of my life, the scariest time of my life. But anyhow, folks, if you have a story, I, uh, we already have one story from a kind person who called in and told us his story. If you have a story, 646-716-5812, and don't be surprised. By the way, if you also drop me a line at info at politicsdoneright.com, info at politicsdoneright.com, I will be more than happy to get you on video on the program and, and tabulate all these stories. I want, I want people to see within your face what we are talking about. So those of you who are, who are not too camera shy, I would love to have you on camera as well telling your story and us putting it on this website that's going to be telling people's true health care stories. Because what's going on in this country is Americans are suffering in silence. Too many Americans suffer in silence. And what we find is we have the plutocracy and their mainstream media out there telling people, Oh, Medicare for all would mean that you'd lose your insurance. Oh, Medicare for all will mean that you lose choice. And the reality they don't tell you is right now with private health care, you don't have choice. Right now with private health care, you choose a private health care who then tells you what to do. You choose a, healthcare, uh, a, a private health care company that says, okay, these are the doctors you can use. These are the medicines you can do. But remember, our main goal is not to take care of you as a patient. Our main goal is to satisfy the profit needs of our shareholders and to ensure that our executives get big bonuses. And how do our executives get the big bonuses from all the premiums that you pay? We get the big bonuses and we get the profits for these companies by screwing you. By any time you need a service, we can't pay for that. Anytime you need a medicine, we can't pay for that. Anytime you need to go to a doctor, they may go ahead and have other doctors that are out of network and they're out of network. Guess what that means? You pay. Folks, let me tell you something. There's nothing, there is nothing independent. There is absolutely nothing private. I mean, there's no, you, uh, going to a private company does not, get, or rather, a private health insurance company gives you no choice. You get a choice of you get a choice of who to screw you. That's what private insurance is. You have a choice of, you have a group of choices of who best to screw you. That is what private insurance is. That is what private insurance has always been, but it has gotten worse and worse as the maximization of profits was necessary for those people who have it. So I want you guys, folks, to tell me your story. 646-716-5812. Again, the number is 646-716-5812. Give me a call. Come on air. Let's talk about it. And you know what? If you can't, if, uh, if, if, you, if you send me an email to info 
at politicsdoneright.com info at politicsdoneright.com we can also arrange to have a video interview with you so that we can start telling Americans these stories so that what they see on the news, what they see on ABC CBS, MSNBC and all these networks that continue to lie to them who are doing the, who are doing the duty of the plutocracy those folks who are, those folks who owned the insurance companies those folks who depend on you being not very smart in other in order to continue to pill for you to take your money away you know people think oh well you know what um I have great insurance right now, and as you get older and older, you realize that as you use more and more of that service, you get covered less and less, and eventually, you know, uh, when, you, when you're completely out of money, like the young man who called before, $160,000 worth of his savings and all his money gone one year. Folks, we can do better than that. And it is called Medicare for All. And it is saying those people who are responsible for being a part of the system should be. Remember, I want everybody to keep this on the top of their heads, okay? This is a must to keep on the top of your head. Whenever anybody tells you that the reason we don't want Medicare for all is because we want to have private insurance companies so that you can have a choice. Punto numero uno. Point number one. Remember that that is not a choice. You are simply choosing who best to screw you. Remember, their loyalty is not to you. The private insurance company loyalty is not to you. Oh, when you have cheap things, you go to a doctor and they paid, and no problem, it's just a few dollars. When you have a few medicines, they paid just a few dollars. But when it comes to anything of substance, remember what their job is. Their job is to maximize profits for their shareholders, and their job is to make sure that the executives in that company get big bonuses. If I ever tell you about staying in that hospital, both with my mother-in-law as she was dying and watching those overworked nurses 12 hours a day, they run them like slaves at that place. And you know, the, the nurses don't want to say much, but I told them, you know what, I'm a national blogger uh, that, that takes uh, act political activists that work a lot with Medicare for All and work a lot with what we want to see in the medical industry. And I said, I know you probably can't talk about it. She closed the door. One of them closed the door and started talking and she says, yeah, they, they work us very hard. But it's not only that they work us very hard. They make us do things that we should, that we know are things we're not supposed to be doing. A good example, my mother-in-law is sitting on, lying, sleeping on her deathbed, and she has a feeding tube. And they are bringing food and food and food and food. They continuously bring her the expensive liquids that you put in that feeding tube that she's not getting. So in that room, piled up in that room... All those feeding, those the the medicine, the, the food that goes into the feeding tube, piling up. Who do you think is going to pay for that? You all are going to pay for that. Medicare, Medicare is going to pay for that because the private companies who own the hospitals, the private companies who employ the nurses, work the nurses like slaves and abuse. And, and continuously charge you. So when they come out there and they say, oh, well, the government can't do anything wrong, right? The government is inefficient. No, the government isn't inefficient. The private companies that the government hire to do the job, they are not only inefficient, they are thieves. And we have to start naming these things the way they really are. Government is not inefficient. The people, what government normally does is government, you know, check this out. You remember when we fought wars, the government would, uh, government was taking care. They build their armies and armies go out and fight wars. They have their own cooks and everything. All these are jobs in the military, right? But then the the private sector lie to people. Oh, private sector is more efficient. So they bring the private sector in, and for each plate of food that a soldier gets, thirty dollars, forty dollars for each plate of food, right? When if the if the military kept its own cooks, they don't have to do a darn thing about paying per plate. They just pay for the food, and the the the, the person who handled the mess hall takes care of business. Private that the lie that they tell Americans over and over again, and that Americans tend to believe, is that somehow the private sector is always better. Look, I don't want to have a system where there's no private sector. My God, I had a software company. I have a software company, and 
my software. I develop it. I want to make a profit from it. I want to pay taxes on the profits that I make to make sure that society can continue to go on. Okay, that's what we want. That's what we want. But there are certain parts of our economy that do not belong, period, that do not belong in the market system. It does not belong there because it is inefficient. And the private companies use the use that to rob you blind. I have a call from 602. 602, come on in. 602, let me put you on speaker. Come on in. Come on in, 602. Hi, Egberto. It's Carrie. Carrie, how are you doing today, my friend? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? I am doing a lot better this week. Last week was horrendous, but I'm doing a lot better. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Well, my daughter got a stroke, and but she's recovering very well, <laughs> so I'm very happy. She's only 28, but uh, again... Oh, it, my goodness. Yes, but it gave a good instance. I, you know, I lost my mother-in-law about th uh, four weeks ago, and now my daughter gets a stroke oh. last week. It's been a bad beginning of the year but you know what we move on we grow and once if, if you have a supportive family a supportive set of friends a supportive set of politics done right listeners things are great i had a tough time right. but i had a lot of support a lot of support oh my goodness well i'm so glad that your daughter is okay i think i did hear a little part of her yes yeah, she's story okay when you had uh, her, her eyesight is not she's the best but she's grateful. coming back Oh, yeah, I hope she continues to recover. Thank you, Carrie. But anyway, talk to me, my friend. Yeah, so it said, um, I think the headline said, this is your main ordeal with healthcare. Yes. Um, and and uh, did you want to say, did you have like a bullet point of like um, what aspect you were talking about or well, did you want me to just share? <laughs> I, I just want you to share your story because what I want to know is that you see, we know that the healthcare system screws just about everybody and we want to know what has it mm -hmm. done that you think it should have done better for you. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is this is kind of an interesting it's a different concept for me because I, you know, I'm a I'm a Caucasian woman in mm -hmm. my early thirties, kind of middle class. I mean, we weren't we definitely weren't upper middle class. My father owns a small business, carpet cleaning, so he does like hard labor and my mom left, you know, when I was young. So it just maybe lower middle class. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had five kids in my family. Well, you know, I have a hard time kind of differentiating between my heart and my moral belief system. Mm -hmm. And then the actuality or the reality of where we live. And I think that the latter is a narrative built by the powers that be. Right. And so I don't want to feed in, like, I'm not going to feed into that. And I've called you before. Um, and, you know, I try to talk to my friends and family as much as possible about politics because politics is life. And, we are living out history right now. And I try to reflect on, hey, what would I have done 100 years ago if I was around at that time? Um, so I try to, you know, keep myself strong in that regard. Now, all of that being said, I, you know, my family's Trump supporters. I'm not. I'm a progressive. But mm -hmm. I... So in my heart, my fundamental core is aligned with Bernie Sanders. Like mm -hmm. if you're just going to ask me, what is my belief? My belief is that healthcare is a human right mm -hmm. because that's written into America. We have the, the right to life first and foremost to life. So what does that mean? Because if you're a person who has a stroke or you're a person who has a heart attack or you're a person who has cancer, you cannot resolve that on your own. You must have health care to have life. You must have health care to have life. So 
if we're going to offer people as a country the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that fundamentally includes health care. And what we've seen over the last hundred years is that people have made a business out of it. Right. And we've got we've got CEOs that are making profit off of actually denying people that right because they don't have money. And so we as a society haven't been strong enough to stand on our own moral ground and realize the lie and propaganda of the healthcare industry, of that third party for profit industry that is taking advantage of people being human. Because if you're a human, you're going to get sick and you need a doctor in order to stay alive. So I'm standing by Bernie Sanders 100% on this. His whole campaign is not me, us. His whole campaign is on this idea that, hey, they're doing this in Europe. They're doing this in Canada. They're realizing that. So if we're the greatest country in the world, then we need to realize that too. And we need to start acting like we are. You know, uh, Um, Carrie, I am happy, first of all, that you are young. Because my hope is in the young, the young, if young people are showing the values that you are showing, which is what I am seeing here in Texas as well, then I have a lot of hope for the future of this country. There are a whole lot of centrists, and uh, we are not even just talking Trump supporters. We're also talking Democrats, my friend. Centrist Democrats are not all that much different than those people who are following the policies supporting Trump. So what I tell people is, I treat my centrist Democrats just like I treat the people who voted for Trump, the Trumpists, some of them, including my family members, my sister. I love on them. In other words, I am not going to reciprocate what they bring forth. What they bring forth is an evil that they are not aware of, you know, and I accept the ignorance of that evil. And what I continue to do is try to open the space to allow them, uh, to allow the real them to emerge. Because as I've always said, most people are good people. Your family that are Trumpists, I mean, forget about politics. I bet other than politics, they love you. You love them. You have fun with them. But then you get into the politics that the plutocracy has put into their minds and they were susceptible to that politics. Suddenly things change on, in that domain. So what I have to say, Carrie, is this. You are a blessing to the American body politic and just being you and promoting the message that you came on politics done right and spoke about and promoting that message even with your own family, even as they disregard it. You are planting seeds. So please keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. Um, So thank you so much, Egberto. Um, One last point, I guess, before I go. I Mm -hmm. always do this to you. Sorry. Sure. Go ahead. (laughs) Um, Just to the Trump supporters, there is a lot of... um, a lot of media still available. You can look it up on YouTube where Trump was saying before he was elected that he was going to provide health care to everyone. Right. Um, so I just, yeah, I just to agree and double down that, you know, on the basis, maybe we do have a lot in common with Trump supporters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank so you so just, kindly, Carrie. You I'm keep just... listening, please. Also, please keep sharing these programs because we we are fighting a media that's not that's not in it for us. That is really nothing more than a, an, an appendage to the plutocracy. So thank you so kindly for calling in, Carrie. Thank you, Egberto. Have a wonderful I will day. Share it. Have a good day. Sure. Bye bye. That was Kerry, folks, with a prescient message as well. Hey, folks, if you, uh, she was talking about Bernie Sanders, and, and a lot of people just thought, oh, Bernie Sanders wasn't going to do this. I want to show you right now, I want to show you right now how scared the plutocracy is now of Bernie Sanders by playing this stuff from, uh, from <laughs> this is funny, from El Señor, uh, what's his name here again? Uh... Chris Matthews, he is going berserk. Check this out. 
Well, let me see. It seems like I need to do a little something here with the, in order to, for you to be able to listen to that. I probably have to do something with the, uh, so that you can hear that. Because as it is right now, I don't think I have it set for you to hear it. So let's go ahead and see how do I get that sound coming across. I think I may have to go to the to the to the rendezvous dashboard or to the audio mixer, probably the audio mixer. Ah, uh, well, not the audio mixer, but anyhow, folks, Chris Matthews is going berserk. Chris Matthews is going crazy because he believes now that somehow Bernie Sanders is going to win. But isn't that something that we all knew already? So let's go and see if I can get that going. Okay, it seems like all right, I, I can't I can't get the, the Chris Matthews uh, thing to play. I, I should have I should have practiced that before, but you know what? Not all the times uh, you can be you can get things done. So I'm sorry about that. But anyhow, Chris Matthews is going crazy. He goes on and he says he doesn't like the democratic field anymore. He was hoping that uh, Elizabeth Warren would have been the one who came out after all, because it seems that the progressives have, you know, have the, the line on the line on right now. But he doesn't see it. He's so disappointed that you know we have. He's so disappointed. But anyhow, uh, let me go ahead and uh, do a little plug here for politics done right. I want to ask all my supporters to please consider visiting our store and store.politicsdoneright.com. That is store.politicsdoneright.com. If you go to store.politicsdoneright.com, you can go ahead and get that T-shirt that says, I support independent media. And why do we need that? We need that so that I can continue doing this. As you know, I am ho I'm trying to raise funds for going to uh, South Carolina to cover. And of course, later on, we have the DNC and we also have Netroots Nation. And of course, we're com completely behind. So support Politics Done Right by going to our store, store.politicsdoneright.com. And for those on podcast, if you are watching it on the screen, I have that plastered on the screen right now. We have another t-shirt that says this that, that says this here. And on an uh, unconventional president should be, uh, or something like that, that uh, we should get rid of the president. We have the president in handcuffs and a chain ball. I think it's a cute little thing. Uh, oh, you're getting high pitch feedback. Let me go ahead and see if I can stop that. Uh, uh, t if you guys hear a feedback, just let me know, and I'll see if I can clear that up. Lawn Differender, I think is your name. Go If you still get that feedback, just let me know if uh, it's gone. I think it should be gone by now. Uh, let me know if it's gone. Uh, different. Let's see, what's your name? Lawn Defender Fur. Uh, is, the pitch, is the feedback gone? Let me know if the feedback is gone. I think it should be gone. All right. Um, anyhow, please go to store.politicsdoneright.com. But folks, there are other ways to support politicsdoneright.com. Uh, the way to do that is to go ahead and I we need subscribers. We we need subscribers that 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 support us. And subscribing to us is very inexpensive. You can go to uh, patreon.com slash politics done right. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right. Become a subscriber to politics done right. And you know what? We have an option that if you become a a independent media warrior, you even get a web page at politicsdoneright.com. Even there, you get a web page at politicsdoneright.com. For our equipment fund, we have an equipment fund for upgrading our uh, network, both not only here, but the ones that we use when we are in the field, like at Netroots or at the DNC or at any of the caucuses. Uh, you can go to gofundme.com slash independent dash media dash upgrade. That, again, is gofundme.com slash independent dash media dash upgrade. And of course, if you just want to contribute uh, and not subscribe, you can contribute to uh, paypal.me, paypal.me slash politics done right. Paypal.me slash politics done right. And of course, folks, please don't forget to shop at our store, store.politicsdoneright.com. 
okay, I think I'm done with that part of the program. Uh, later on, I'll, I may come back and say, folks, please do remember that we need your support. Uh, now, for anybody else who has a story, please feel free. Give us a call at uh, 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. Would love to hear from you because it is imperative. It is imper Oh, by the way, those of you who are on YouTube, if you want to be a supporter of the show, there are many ways. Uh, we have all those links in there that you can support us at. Or you can just click on that dollar sign in the YouTube message box, which is called, I think it's called a, a, a Top Chat or uh, Top Chat or Super Chat. You can super chat me and say, Hey, Egberto, me gusta lo que estás haciendo. Oh, Egberto, I like what you're doing. And you can super chat me by just clicking on that dollar sign down there and, and just you know say that you, you're enjoying what we're doing. Now, folks, I, I, I want to ask you, we, we need to get our numbers up on YouTube, uh, number of uh, the, to, the people who subscribe to YouTube. Uh, so if, you, if you're willing to, please go ahead and go to youtube.com slash Egberto Willies, youtube.com slash Egberto Willies, and just subscribe to the channel, please. Uh, you just have to click on it and you're done. Uh, that is youtube.com slash Egberto Egberto Willies. Egberto is spelled E-G-B-E-R-T-O W-I-L-L-I-E-S one word. YouTube.com slash Egberto Willies. And of course on Facebook, uh, the, the parts of Facebook where I actually am able to answer and see all your messages immediately is Facebook.com slash politics done right. Facebook.com slash politics done right. Why don't you go there and like that page that would really uh, in, help us to get our numbers up so that we can have more reach we cannot do any of this without your support and lastly again please become a patreon please become a patreon that is p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash politics done right folks i am going to take all these stories that i get from you please remember you can send me a story your story if you don't want to call and tell me your story you can write your story at info at politics done right.com info at politics done right.com tell me your story and you know also there's a possibility after you tell me your story i'll email you back and say you know what can i get you via remote video to do uh, to do this with me, and you know what? It'll look. Let, let me let me show you what it looks like. Um, if, if you want to see, I'll do something like I did with Tom Hartman a few ago. You know, see how that is right there. That you see, uh, you're in one box and I'm in the other, and we have a a, a very a very smooth conversation about uh, about your story because that is how we are going to make a difference. We are going to make a difference. Y you know, one of the things about Americans, right? all of us, is that we tend to suffer in silence, right? And when I say we tend to suffer in silence, what I mean is a lot of things are happening to people all over. And what people do is they sit back and they many times they are ashamed of what is happening to them. Not realizing that... Uh, these are things that happen to human beings. These are things that happen to Americans. These are things that happen. No shame, nothing we have to worry about because it just happens. And we have a plutocracy that has really made this their innermost being as they extract it all from you. So there is no reason that memory welcome aboard. Let me go and see if I have any of these things to answer. Daniel Ledo says, stories are the lazy man's political argument. It does, not, <laughs> it does not rely on facts. In fact, stories are the most weak kind of argument as the stories may not even be true. Well, you know what? My story that I told about my daughter is not only true, it is verifiable. And every story that people tell me most of the times, if I go ahead and verify... They're true. And the fact that you would say something like a story doesn't rely on facts, I don't know what you're talking about. If somebody just got out of a hospital where a doctor dinged them with a bill that, wasn't, that shouldn't have been or where an insurance company didn't pay a bill that they should have paid, 
there's nothing, uh, I mean, that saying that there's something wrong with that story, I am sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Dimitri OG, thank you for being here. Uh, your story, uh, Dimitri says, your story is the same for millions of us. It ain't working for us, and you're so right. Jacqueline Odell Clush replying to Daniel Ledo. Factual testimonies are valuable tools of information. You said it, my friend. Jacqueline, estás correcta. You're absolutely right. Dimitri OG, it's better for me to be sick and working from the top. Uh, Leverender says, healthcare is a human right. You're absolutely right. People over profits and the oligarchy. Thank you, friend. You are absolutely right. And I love your hashtags. Uh, hashtag fight for us. Hashtag together we win. I love that part. Together, together we win. Together we win. Uh, Lee Grant says, speaking of evil, has Bernie denounced his staff members who called for political violence, gulag, guillotines, etc.? Uh, the truth is, Lee, I don't know what you're talking about, but you know what? Your, your appendages say a whole lot of stuff. I will not, just like how I didn't ask Hillary Clinton, just like how I didn't ask Donald Trump to just go out there and speak out against every person that had something less than nice to say, I'm not going to ask Bernie to do that either. Otherwise, he'll spend his time because, you know, there are, there are crazy people in every, every part, every party, crazy people in every, or people that make their words not be the best. Okay, Memory says, Lee Grant has Trump provided his taxes yet? Of course not. Bernie has. You are right about that, Lee. You see, uh, he doesn't show anything because what if, if he was, if Donald Trump was to show his taxes, what he will show the people who support him is that he's always been screwing them. While he wants them to pay their taxes, he doesn't pay his. While he wants them to work hard, he does not work hard. He is nothing more than appendage of the plutocracy right now. Daniel, don't deny your own reality. Memory tells to Daniel Ledo. That is so true. But folks, we are coming close to the end of the show. We have about, uh, about five minutes left. Uh, we still have time for a couple more calls. 646-716-5812. Don't, don't, don't be shy. 616, or rather, 646 Seven one six five eight one two. Uh, feel free to give us a call. Feel free to write us at info at politicsdoneright.com so I can get uh, your story. I will write your story. I will talk to you to get your story. I will do whatever is necessary so that we can have that conversation so that America can hear that conversation because, folks, we cannot do this without you. We definitely cannot do this without you. So please remember, please remember, the job of independent media is to do the things that the good people in the mainstream media, and there are a lot of good people in the mainstream media, but they do not have the wherewithal to do it because they're solely owned by the advertising that must appear on their channels, and as such, they cannot talk Real, they cannot spend too much time speaking badly about the pharmaceutical companies. They cannot spend a whole lot of time speaking badly about the hospital companies, the insurance companies, because their lifeblood depends on keeping those people purchasing advertising from these companies. So, folks, please remember that. It is important that we do. It is important. So, again, one last plug. Please go to store.politicsdoneright.com. Again, that is store.politicsdoneright.com. Support independent media. Please make sure that we are funded. Please make sure that we are funded enough to get the job done. We cannot do it without you. We also would love for you to become a Patreon, a person who supports the program, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, dot com slash politics done right and if you want to uh, support our uh, equipment fund gofundme.com slash uh, independent dash uh, what is it uh, it is gofundme.com slash independent dash media dash upgrade and of course you can give us at paypal.me slash politics done right i want to thank all the callers for calling in and telling us their story i want to thank those of you who will be sending your story via info at politics done right .com. we are going to do this together it's not going to be easy we are going to have everybody against us 
when I say everybody, I mean the plutocracy, plus those who have been indoctrinated by the plutocracy. But you know what? Persistence always work. None, nothing, worth, nothing worth it comes easy. And the question is, will we be persistent enough? I promise you that I will be persistent in doing this with independent media. And as such, that's one of the reasons we need your support. We need your support so that we can continue doing this. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right. And you know exactly how I end this baby. I am what? Out! Out!